Microsoft ended its E3 2018 conference in incredible style with a trailer for Cyberpunk 2077, a bright, colourful montage of CD Projekt Red's new futuristic universe. And while gameplay isn't shown, the bustling Night City is the clear headline act. Built on Red Engine 4, all footage here points to the text progress and the rich landscapes possible with it. Between the maze of subway lines, a clean, utopian skyline overshadows a darker world of gang warfare and corporate corruption. Each shot is confidently jam-packed with detail, and even based on a 1 minute 30 second trailer, the upgraded tech here looks well up to the task of delivering. Two big questions still dangle overhead though, as gorgeous as it is. Firstly, to what extent is this what we'll end up playing on release? And secondly, what hardware is this actually running on? Bearing in mind The Witcher 3 suffered backlash after the final console game didn't match up to its initial trailer, it's hard to see CD Projekt Red making the same mistake this time. Indeed, right from the start is established as genuine game engine footage. And while creative license is used to frame Night City from its best angles, the fact is there are details in the visuals which suggest it's both the real deal and most likely console footage. Whether that's presumably Xbox One X or an early prospective PC spec, built to factor in Microsoft's next gen machine, codenamed Scarlet, we'll have to see. The main part that stands out is Cyberpunk 2077's resolution. This footage comes straight from Microsoft's Media Riser, giving us direct 4K capture of the conference. A pixel count of multiple frames turns in a true 3840 by 2160 image though, and with no sign so far of the dynamic scaling seen in The Witcher 3's enhanced patch for Xbox One X. It's a full-blooded 4K image then, crisp, clear and conceivably possible on X, given the team has an even better handle on this generation's console architecture by now. Next there's the frame rate, where the game itself renders with a 30fps cap. It's a half refresh number that more realistically puts it in console territory. After all, given the option, a PC showcase trailer would surely be running higher. However, it makes me wonder if we'll see a repeat of the 60fps option we already had in The Witcher 3's patch on X, an option that could be more useful for Cyberpunk's gameplay. Gang shootouts play a big part in this world, and so having a lower resolution high frame rate option would be a great fit if there are traditional shooter controls for aiming. But as it stands, signs so far point to an unwavering 30fps for cutscenes at least. A rock solid 4K 30fps gives this trailer its intended effect though. It's pristine, cinematic if you will, with beautiful soft lighting and smoke effects that bed well into the environments. Even so, the anti-aliasing used here isn't 100% consistent. It suggests post-process anti-aliasing given that coverage is uneven. Some edges get smoothed, others are left completely raw, revealing a 3840x2160 pixel grid. Lit edges, for example, like the contours of this aircraft and the contrasts on cable lines, go largely untreated. These elements shimmer and create visible noise, and it doesn't really match the rest of the image. Again, quality varies spot to spot, and these are the outliers, but it all makes it more plausible as a console showing. Beneath that 4K window though, is a world built with the confidence you'd expect from CD Projekt Red. Of course, the bustle of Night City's central square has parallels with the sprawl of Novigrad in The Witcher 3. The theme has obviously changed, but the ambition is still sky high. Market stalls and castle walls give way to sleek, neon lit buildings peppered in between by cars and many more NPCs. It's staggering to imagine the possibilities that could be open here, a futuristic playground built to be freely explored in any direction and presumably with a day-night cycle too. Most impressive to me zooming in is just how far the draw distance extends here, even to the customers in shops far, far away. Overall, from the centre to its outskirts, the illusion of a living, breathing place is strong. These results are arguably only possible thanks to CD Projekt Red's work on optimising The Witcher 3 on console and PC already. In theory, this futuristic setting changes the equation in terms of GPU and CPU demands too, rather than the rolling pastoral landscape of the White Orchard, filled with memory bandwidth sapping bushes and trees, the layout in Cyberpunk is more streamlined by necessity. It's built around clean, straight building outlines, where polygon counts can be spread out further afield, and even applied to a boost in character model quality. 
Speaking of which, character design quality is standout, even for the game's passerbys, who get a similar level of attention to our so far silent lead, V. Take the opening shot as an example. Passengers are individually detailed with great care, where even hairstyles, accessories and clothing are tailored closely for each. Indeed, Cyberpunk setting opens the gates to more variety in materials than The Witcher 3's fantasy backdrop ever could, and it pays off handsomely in the final picture. There's the chrome and metal exteriors of the androids, leather jackets, new hair shaders for mohawks, and even a felt material for gun case linings, and the chipped paintwork on taxicabs. It's gorgeous stuff, but none of this would come to life without on-point lighting. Much like its last game, Cyberpunk 2077 uses physically based shaders for skin, hair and even eyes, creating a natural reaction between oncoming light and the surface. It means you get true to life reactions for rough, reflective or opaque material types, all consistent with a real life sample. The engine's real time local reflections, bloom and a distinctive anamorphic lens flare from passing lamps and signs is also on clear show. No surprise then, CD Projekt Red plants light sources everywhere it feasibly can, even clothing, including that neon burst across the back of V's jacket. One interesting twist here is that global illumination is also in effect, meaning light bounce occurs logically from each of these light points. For example, it's easy to catch the brake lights on V's car casting a red hue onto the concrete below, and each new red strip enhances that reflection. Again, it helps each object sit naturally in the world, and likewise for the particle lighting as this character's eye patch gets shot. Now, shadow quality is perhaps the only thing you could criticise in this showing, but you really have to look close to nitpick. Interiors are the usual culprit here, and character shadows have a slightly rough appearance that doesn't match the quality of the game's lighting. There's also a clear use of a screen-based form of ambient occlusion, meaning shade appears and disappears at the screen's edges. In this wide shot, for example, you can see thick blobs of shade fizzle in and out based purely on the camera's framing. It's a cheap form of ambient occlusion, but fortunately it's not really too intrusive for the rest of the showcase. Again, it'll be fascinating to see how Cyberpunk's new PBR materials, its lighting and these shadows interact with the day-night cycle. Even different weather conditions will put an interesting visual spin on the city at night, reflecting that sea of neon signs and skyscrapers. The choice to set most of this trailer in the light of day is curious though. It certainly helps drive the idea of a utopia gone awry. For variety though, the final game should have plenty more to offer, and moving to the outskirts and the slums, we're sure to see less pristine clean materials and something messier and more complex. The last point of praise here is the post effects pipeline. Anti-aliasing may not be uniform, but that motion blur is stand out throughout the whole length of the trailer. It works on a per object basis and also for camera velocity, where slowing footage down there's no hint of banding or artifacting on edges. The sampling on moving edges is seamlessly blended, and above all the effect is more natural than most games this generation. The Witcher 3 itself was a strong performer here too, and it does work well to smooth camera pans in 30fps games. Even so, it'll be interesting to see if we again end up with a toggle for those who prefer it disabled. For cutscenes at least, we also have a smooth bokeh depth of field effect. This also translates from CD Projekt Red's last game, and the camera focal range adjusts fluidly as it tracks V through the subway. It's really to the engine's credit that the edge blending is hard to separate from the effect of the motion blur, and all combined it gives the game a real cinematic presence. Overall, it's impossible to not respect Cyberpunk 2077's determination to try something different. On a technical level, there are only subtle flashes of the older engine work from The Witcher 3 making it across, the shadows and anti-aliasing in particular being minor rough edges. But everything else, from the lighting to the materials, it all shines brightly. And CD Projekt Red's passion for world building is met with an engine that seems more than capable of realising each and every detail. This could well stand as the game of E3 2018 too. While there's no firm release date penned in, it'll be fascinating to see how this trailer stacks up to the final product. Anyway, I'd be interested to hear what you make of the game. Do you think this is what we'll get at release on current gen? Or could it possibly be a visual standard only meant for the next gen class of consoles? Do let me know in the comments, and otherwise, if you enjoyed this technical analysis, feel free to like or subscribe. As ever, this video is presented at 4K, but if you want the source file, you can find it on our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net. 
To get in touch with me or the team, you can also contact us directly on Twitter right here. But until next time, thanks for watching.